What's up guys? This is the Broferman and I am back to bring you to the next episode of my Empire Total War. Let's play as the Ottoman Empire. So to round off where we left off, the Prussians are attacking us inside a fortification. This will be the first uh, run out of our actual uh, Nizam Sedit infantry, which will be pretty interesting. Um, but I'm feeling pretty good about this. We've got some um, good melee infantry to rush the walls wherever they uh, get a foothold. So let's defend. So this will be our. F this will be an interesting test case because it will be our first defense of a of a um, fortification with our current model uh, Ottoman troops, or with our current. My current formation, I suppose, um, would be the better way to put it. We do have a lot of cavalry, which we're going to deploy outside the walls. So, deploy my howitzers. Keep our foot artillery in reserve, ready for... Uh, where, well, maybe if we put them right at the back, sometimes they can really lob their shells. So let's keep our Mameluke guards out here. The general's going to stay safe inside. So, let's put some of our... God, we do get a lot of infantry. <laughs> I forget that with the Ottomans. These are our first Nizam Sedit infantry units. Let's put some Israeli on the walls. Put some... Sekban Janissaries, or Semat Janissaries can stay to the rear ready to move in. Oh, there's so many troops. I put my Semats actually right at the back here. Our pikemen are going to just hunker down. Not currently useful because they can't fight on the walls, which is a bit annoying, but not the end of the world. So we've still got some Nizam setting infantry, we've still got some riflemen. Aha! So I accidentally redeployed one of my Nizam infantry from here. So let's put... Uh, actually, if I move my Israeli along just a little bit, let's put my riflemen back here. Got my grenadiers ready to form up wherever the first breach is made. I think that's it. We do have guys coming from over here, so we may end up deploying these Janissaries sooner than we'd like. We've also got some light horsemen. So they are... They are lobbing... My artillery, foot artillery, is lobbing shells over the walls at the enemy artillery. Right, okay, I might actually move my cavalry inside, because that's a much larger concentration of enemy troops coming in from over there than I thought there would be. Get everyone inside. Especially as I have no actual uh, capable, no troops capable of actually uh, attacking here. Although it looks like we might get intercepted by a unit of hussars. And my riflemen are going to pick those men apart. quickly fight them in order to make them to keep them away from us let's get my artillery to start dropping my howitzers to start dropping carcass shot onto the enemy formations it's starting to make a breach here as I'm um, set it infantry good Full artillery seems to be doing a 
surprisingly good job. Knocking out their artillery. In come the carcass shells. Come on. Yes. Excellent shot. So we do have enemy infantry coming from the south. Well, there's unit of marines that are just... Unit of marines and unit of Swiss Guard that don't want to move. So who's that running? The 18th Regiment of Foot is fleeing. Foot artillery. Let's get them attacking the other foot. See, this is a new this is a new thing for me. I didn't realise foot artillery could I never really appreciate how high they could lob their uh, lob their um, shells. So let's take these riflemen out of the mix. Let's drop an Izam set of infantry over here as well, so we can maximise our firepower. In comes more carcass shots. Misses, sadly. But will these miss? Nope. This second Howard's team is doing really well. You're going to miss as well. Yeah. Actually, let's move the my Janissaries over here as well. So I can move my... So your Rifleman... Let's put my Rifleman over here start to pick at the enemy troops as they march into our field of fire. God, the fottery is doing a good job. We've only got one gun left. Obviously it's a com combination also of the artillery on the walls here. Another good shot. So the 41st Regiment, actually let's make sure we keep attacking the the biggest units rather than the well the most intact units I should say. There goes their artillery, so let's go after this regiment of horse. Let's keep picking targets at the back for my foot artillery to focus on. Yeah, but those Prussian gunners have still in position, but they're not actually engaging us. Yeah, it might be a bit fruitless to engage. Cavalry with carcass shot, considering they are so mobile. <coughs> I say, and then I immediately get a couple of kills. Just keep hitting them. Here's the fly core. They're getting in close range, although I'm probably going to hit, fire it well off, then back on, because I'd rather. The cannons were firing, but the muskets were not. And the muskets are going to be what does the most damage. There we go, they're all firing now. So let's also start lobbing some carcass shells back here to help knock out some of the reinforcing troops. Some ranging shots. They've not got some. They've not got good accuracy yet. These guys may. Yep. See, why I'm all about attacking the the more complete units is because the uh, the completer units will stand. They will stand. They'll get to the walls and they'll actually make their advances. Whereas if you focus on a small unit. Really, they will eventually, um, they'll keep absorbing your fire, whereas what you want is to, if 
foot like this unit of fusiliers, they will not last very long at all doing anything. Like, they will crumble. They may even crumble before they even get the uh, grappling irons up, which would be great. Fusiliers, they're digging in. Darker shot inbound. No, another missed shot. Yeah, 45th have routed. I may deploy riflemen right on the edge. But they can use their long range fire to help pick at enemy troops as well as this unit of cavalry. There we go. So they should get some good shots off onto the light horse. Not a crazy amount of shots. But enough. So the Dragoons have dismounted. The Mullendorf Dragoons. Eh, I'm not such a fan of their uniforms. Some artillery came in, alright. These guys are just classic dragoons. Let's go back to my artillery. Oh no, don't friendly fire. Yeah, a bit too close now, those guys. You may as well continue trying to attack one of these smaller units because they are almost perpendicular, so you can get some really good kills. Out foot artillery fire. Yeah, 43rd is taking a lot of punishing fire. Oh, smack bang in the middle of their line, that artillery shot was. There they go. We've started to take chunks out of this line infantry unit, or well, this Swiss line unit. Um, and I'm going to actually speed up time a little bit, just put it up to the next slide, the next uh, slot, just because what a huge amount's happening. You guys should start taking fire from my scouts. Because the, the, the enemy looks like they're deciding to. Uh, Whoops, they keep wanting to charge me, but they can't. There go the cavalry after they've relocated targets. Or change, not relocated, they just changed their targets. Okay, you might even triple speed it, because right now the AI is wasting too much time outside of our walls. Like they're not. Hmm. So my main objective is now to use my howitzers to uh, attempt to make enemy forces route. Because right now I don't think... They don't have a way in because their artillery has gone. But they don't want to attack. Because they will lose. Because all of their infantry units are now under strength. So I'm not quite sure what they're hoping to achieve. There you go, my foot artillery may as well hit the Dragoons. And it's turn fire at will off. So just keep bombarding them. There we go, the Swiss Grenadiers have routed. So then let's hit this Marine unit. Yeah, I think that's what's... Ooh, friendly fire. Yeah, I think that's what spurred the decision, the enemy's decision making. They can't attack, so they're just going to sit outside. So rather than just put you guys through this for the rest of the episode, I'm going to cut the recording here, then bring you guys back. So see you in a minute. 
So it turns out, while I was looking at my phone, anticipating nothing happening, uh, they actually did attack. And they got close to my walls, and it looks like they are going to attempt an assault. So let's pull my rifleman out and get my Semat Janissaries in. Let's pick new targets for my artillery. Yeah, their infantry's routing already. Swiss line are broken as well. So they do have some stronger units here. Um, but they're about to be engaged by my riflemen, so they're not going to be at completely full strength. Very accurate rifle fire at that as well. I'm starting to lose. I'm curious what's killing my men. I'm sure it's probably artillery misses. May even switch these guys over to round shot to bombard the cavalry. Come on, men. My melee infantry are up here just waiting to meet you. So speed up because right now the Swiss Guard are going to come back. And they're gone. Now these guys just want to fire by rank back here rather than assault. At the very least they are attacking with their good infantry. So it's Swiss line and marines. But as soon as the first guy crosses the parapet. Let's compare a Janistry unit, Semat Janistry unit, to our uh, Nizam said it infantry. Ched it, Nizam Ched it, said it. The melee attack isn't super great. The charge bonus, the defense is a, a bit better. But compared to an Israeli, they're actually a lot. They're, they're not. They're pretty much not as good in melee combat. Okay, you guys hold fire for now. Let's march up my other Janissary unit. So we could start to lose a lot of our Janissaries here because they're not fantastic at... Well, they're not... better... than... The alternatives at melee combat. But they're actually doing pretty they're holding off these units pretty well. But that guy just skewered a Swiss guardsman. God, the Marines are falling thick and fast. What about this guy? He parried one of my guys. Oh, he's just oh that so what these Janissaries, are actually, they are actually doing a lot better than I thought, based on stats alone. Yeah, these guys have established more of a bridgehead on this flank, but our Janissaries aren't having any of it. Yeah, our men are falling. Not to the same level. So let's increase the speed a little bit. Yeah, see now they are down as winning, so... Our guys are doing okay. But guard infantry is still guard infantry at the end of the day. Okay, just massacre them. You guys can begin firing at will again. Take your position on the wall, because you've got a cavalry unit right there. There we 
go. Take a position on the wall. Gun down the 16th Light Horse. Isn't that a special regiment? No, I don't. Oh no, it's for the Brits. That's a special regiment. Damn right, it was a decisive victory. That was an abject failure on the part of the Prussians to try and get into our... Or into, to get into their fort, I should say. There they go, scuttling back. These are the kind of long-term victories that will give us the advancement we need. <laughs> so they want Georgia and Moldavia. They want to give us Astrakhan and Don Voisko. <laughs> and fire in advance. To be honest, from the AI, that's not... I mean, it's a bad offer. <laughs> well... It's a bad offer from a campaign perspective, but from the AI, that's actually not too silly. Because the AI normally gives much sillier options than that. Well, it looks like we are going to be advancing into Russian territory as well. We shall make Moscow pay for this. So we're going to not have as much cash because they are blockading our port. But that's not the end of the world. Morocco's taken back Morocco. So we're getting a cool 11 grand. What kind of a fleet is this? Not great. I mean, our fleet, our fleet is growing. But I would like let's build a second rate so this army here well not this it's not really much of an army per se let's pick up a general let's move them out of Moldavia they can start to pick up some reinforcements in order to drive east. And we also look like we have an option, we have a gap here, to move Damat Ali, who's been here a long time. Obviously we do have to be still careful of Dagestan because they do hate us. But they've got a bunch of protectorates, so we're not that bothered with them. Just keep them on board. Just give them a fr give them a state gift and let's trade. They want Moldavia for twenty seven grand. <laughs> it's probably not bad, but I don't want to give it up. Oh, this army. Ah, the reason why he can't they can't advance is because this guy's blocking their path. Yeah, they can push up, and we can also pick up some Israeli to step up as a bit of a garrison. Morocco has risen. We're losing. We've lost trade with Russia. Can't trade with Morocco, which is unfortunate. Venice, let's Venice, let's peace out. Come on now. Well, I don't want to peace out with Prussia. We've got a war with them. Don't want to piece out with Austria either. So we do have forces up here right at the front. But I want them to try and push me off their territory. You could do with howitzers. Although I don't think I can recruit them anywhere. Uh -huh. Take three turns to recruit some point it will definitely be worth attacking Denmark because that's the kind of thing the AI does to uh, surprise attack people there's not a crazy amount of need for replenishment of this army could do a bit but 
let's put so that's the remnants of their army I'm tempted to put these guys under siege to provoke them to attack me we do have these guys in reserve but I want this guy to build up his strength to maybe hit Kiev or Crimea What have they got here? A lot of infantry. Okay. Let's raid their port and break it. Lots of construction. Let's check our research. One more turn till fire in advance. We've pretty much just got an advancement across the board. Okay, let's hit enter. Let's see, we do need to grow our forces in order to do some damage to the Russians. <laughs> yeah, I thought so, Russia. Although they're probably going to go pick up an army and come back. But that's okay, because of our trade we've got a long... We can spot them coming from a long way off. There's no risk of them getting the jump on us. Once we're going to expand our culture onwards, I'm probably going to have one of my... So in the Caucasus, I'm going to have one of my priests stay with my army. Yeah, they have military access, I think, with me. Which is why they're not triggering war. Imam in Georgia. Excellent. You, and he's a really good one as well. He can go to Astrakhan. This chap continued to Chetask. Both these guys are pretty good. So you convert, start converting there. This guy moved, start converting Crimea. Let's just really start making inroads here. We also want to keep our road building going in order to keep pushing, in order to keep uh, resupplying our troops. So it's a pretty big Prussian army there. Okay, we've got a gunnery school. Am I building an ordnance board anywhere? Because we've got fire in advance. Good. I'm building one. We're going on to light infantry doctrine, which probably is a too bad of an idea, but I may rather want a more economic oomph. <laughs> Traits gained. Sickly and no sense of shame. Hey, got another imam! Okay, so I've got Crimea, you advance up to, uh, actually you push up to Laval. Especially as this guy is really good. Okay, let's upgrade some farms, because farms are cheap upgrades and they spur the development of towns in Kabul. Although Kabul's about to have a town grow. Romilia. So, yeah, you're expanding your troops. You can grow. So once I take... If I take Lawal in a battle and knock these guys out, I would be tempted to push this guy against Kiev. I'm pretty sure Denmark has... We have military... Yeah, they have indefinite military access to my lands, which could... You know, it could be a pain in the ass. Um later on but let's not worry about that now <laughs> I 
yeah, Austria's starting to uh, appreciate they've got some real problems. Prussians are marching troops up. And Prussia's also at war with Spain, and they've got the border with the Spanish, so they can't afford to do too do something too crazy. Oh, the Russian Navy's coming back. Oh, the Russians... Oh, I forgot. The Russians are at war with the Prussians, aren't they? Yeah, so uh, this is ripe. This is a ripe opportunity to make some gains against two of our currently most dangerous enemies. As well as, obviously, our need to keep growing our economy. So I still do need to keep remembering to parcel off some of my spending every turn towards upgrading civil buildings, upgrading economic buildings. Military buildings probably not a bad idea either, um, just to respond to any surprises. Asharin in Persia. Okay, you. I want you to get up to Moscow. So he's got a long way to go. Pick up some economic upgrades. Let's get. I mean, yeah. Okay, we've got one second. Let's probably get a, another. Oh, that's a that's a lot of new towns. Actually, we can't afford that. You can get a craft workshop. Mesopotamia. You can also get a craft workshop. Could design by Lukistan. You can. Also get a craft workshop. So we've upgraded the port in Baluchistan. No, Izmir, sorry. Let's upgrade the farm. Let's upgrade. Oh, how good of a... It's only a meag yield, low yield. at least this provides more military military technology research points although we are getting oh no where are we still we are getting down there these are considered the rifles so we've got that's our first check and ship with the line built we've still got our spies are doing well in these regions The Mughals are growing in the Americas, but it's not a, a massive concern yet. So our main concern is the immediate frontier. So I want to take Chakask and then also take Astrakhan. And also Dagestan at some point needs to die. But I probably want to build an army to be in ready to respond to these guys first because then we'll be at war on a giant front up here and even now Zagreb could try something sneaky but I am unsure about pushing here hmm Okay, what I might do is throw some more reinforcements in there and then I'll send this guy to lay siege to uh, Hungary and this guy will lay siege to Vienna. Put them under siege and it'll start to really cause some problems. You're going to stay where you are because they're, they're in range to support this battle and they're also in a good position to help dissuade any troops from trying to flank too much. You really need to grow into a bit proper army and push against, push east, east. Another successful mission, cool. Um, but looking at the timer, I believe that's time to end the part. So thanks for watching guys, hope you've enjoyed and I'll see you next time.